Hi, I'm Dr. Jerry Nosenchuk, and I specialize in menopause and hormone and sexual problems in menopausal women. And today we have three young ladies, Janine, Debbie, and what are we going to call you today? Christina. Christina. Mm -hmm. And they are patients of mine. Uh, Christina is a fairly recent patient, uh, since September actually. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been coming, Debbie? Couple of years. Couple of years. And Janine, when did you first, you started in just 1985 or something? Uh, no, well, it's been 35 years. 35 years, which is incredible <laughs> because I'm the same age. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to start uh, with a little history of why these young ladies came to see me and uh, what their story was. So, uh, Christina, you haven't been coming to see me that long, and you came to see me in September of 2018. And why did you come see me? Um, because I wasn't feeling like myself mm -hmm. and my libido was down mm -hmm. and I have hot and cold flashes because I had a partial hysterectomy so I decided to come get help because I went to my doctor and they kept telling me nothing was wrong so, ah okay and but something was wrong because you didn't feel well I don't know if they're here yet. I just want you to talk a tiny bit louder okay, okay. Uh, so they said nothing was wrong. So did you go to another doctor and ask? I went to many doctors and then they gave me medicine for being depressed and all other sorts of medicines that didn't work. And I expressed my concern to Debbie and she mentioned you. And right. I came now, now, why did they say nothing was wrong? And I, <clears throat> I have a reason, uh, I mean a potential reason. A lot of times when somebody's had hysterectomy and they still have their ovaries, and they're as young as you are, you're 36. Yes. Yeah, when they're as young as you, and you were younger then, because how many years ago did you have that? When I was 28. 28. So they said, no, this is not possible because you have your ovaries. Correct. Right. Yeah. Well, and your hormone level sometimes didn't seem too out of range for somebody who was premenopausal, right? Yes. So uh, the reason is, is that a lot of physicians and patients assume since they have their ovaries, they're going to work. Yep. And often they do, but in some cases, just taking out the uterus impairs the circulation to the ovaries. A lot of times, the circulation to the ovaries comes right off the main blood vessel, the aorta. Okay? Mm -hmm. But sometimes, uh, it's actually, the majority of the circulation comes from the uterine artery or another artery in the uterus. And in your case, that probably wasn't true. And uh, although you might have had partial function or not, uh, obviously it, it wasn't enough for you. So you went uh, and you came to see me and we treated you. And how did we treat you? We gave you implants, hormone implants. We implanted estrogen and testosterone. And uh, uh, it took a little while. I mean, your flushes went away probably within a few weeks. Yeah. But really to regain... Uh, your sexual feeling, uh, it took longer, right? It took a, about, about, about how long? Probably about a month. A month is good. Sometimes <laughs> it takes longer, yeah. And um, so how are you feeling before then uh, as far as your desire for sex? None. None. And um, did that interfere your relationship with your husband? Yes, very much so. And the, the, <laughs> Conflict? Yeah, he Conflict. was unhappy. And uh, did he ask you that even though you didn't feel that way, maybe you should have sex anyway? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Now, I'll tell you uh, something I've heard a lot, uh, which is really bizarre, uh, is that sometimes the partner, whether it's a husband or you know, a companion that they're with for a long time, a partner, uh, say, well, if you really love me, you do it anyway. Yeah. And... The problem is, is when your libido is low, sometimes you have a sexual aversion. I mean, just the thought of having sex just makes you nauseous. I mean, yeah. I mean, you cringe, and sometimes uh, uh, the female partner will go to bed at a different time, wear a sweatsuit to bed, uh, do anything to avoid hugging or any kind of situation <laughs> that might be intimate. All right, so you're doing better, right? Yes, I'm doing better. All right. So, Debbie, you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when did you come? About how long ago did you come see me? It's been a couple of years. Yeah. 
And uh, was your story similar, or what was your story? Um, I was having issues with cysts on my ovaries. Um, I had a couple of surgeries to have the cysts removed. Um, they told me I had endometriosis, so they ended up doing a complete um, hysterectomy. They removed my um, cervix as well. Um, and then my body completely shut down. Did you, they take out your ovaries too? Yes. Okay. So what do you mean your body shut down? Um, I felt like I jumped in a swimming pool and went to bed. Okay. And did you have hot flushes and sweats? I had hot flushes, sweats. I was moody. I felt like I didn't even know who I was anymore. Did you, did you sweat so much at night sometimes that you had to change your bed clothes? Absolutely. And, uh, how did you sleep? Not Fair. well with that. Yeah, no, no, you can't sleep. And, you know, it, it, it's not well appreciated sometimes, but people have so many hot flashes and so many sweats, they don't sleep, and they're miserable, they can't think, and they're depressed because they're suffering from sleep deprivation, like one of these spy movies where they put you under a light and don't let you sleep, and it's, it's not good. So we treated you in a similar fashion, and uh, that's Christina, and how'd that work out? Wonderful. Wonderful. And you don't have flushes, except no. when your hormones run out. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, you're sexual? Absolutely. Do you want to brag or no? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. <good. laughs> All right. And Janine? Yes. Uh, so you are how old? 36. And Debbie? 41. 41. So you've been seeing me for 35 years? Yes. 35 years. And uh, we treated you similar fashion, right? We gave you implants and, uh, and did that... Uh, take away any, and I think you came originally because you were concerned about osteoporosis or something. Yes. Right, which is really uh, uh, an estrogen deficiency disease. There's other factors involved, but it's an estrogen deficiency disease. All right. And I'm only five foot one, so I... <laughs> yeah, she's all right. No, she's, she's great. No, she was concerned about her bones, and, uh, <laughs> and she's done very well. All right, so that was 35 years ago, and... Um, we treated you with pellets. You've been getting pellets for 35 years, uh, implant hormones of, you know, estrogen yes, and uh, testosterone. And uh, are you capable of having sex at the moment? Yes. And you have sex drive. Do you think about sex? Yes. Spontaneously? Yes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to control myself. <laughs> All right. Um, that's great. How old are you? I'm 90. She's 90. You look great. <laughs> you do. You look great. So, uh, would you change anything? Would you ever stop this therapy? Oh, definitely not. And yeah. I would recommend it to people. Yeah, I, I think uh, that it's not realized that the effect, you know, people talk about the effect of uh, hormones, or we might use the other side of the coin, hormone deficiency. Hormone deficiency is not just hot flashes and sweats or sexual thoughts, okay? And the actual reason that we were discussing before that you lose your sex drive because when you don't have the proper, if you want to use the balance, or if you don't have uh, estrogen, testosterone in your brain, uh, then you can't have a sex drive because lack of libido, if you want to say not getting horny or having you know spontaneous sexual thoughts, is a hormone deficiency problem. It's a hormone deficiency disease, okay? Uh, and you're doing well because libido and the ability to have sex, and we're talking about sex means that the parts that are affected by hormones, your labia, your clitoris, your vagina, are hormone dependent. So it doesn't make any difference if you're 25 or 90. Because if you're 25 and you haven't had hormones for five years, your vagina is atrophies, your labia are beginning to disappear, as is your clitoris receding, okay? And if you're 90 years old and you've been on hormones all those time, those organs and tissues are intact and are capable of doing what they're supposed to do. They're capable of lubricating. They're capable of uh, feeling good. All right. So uh, I'm thrilled that you guys uh, had this talk today and uh, this video we made and uh, Anything else you guys want to add? Any, because I, I can't cover everything, the experiences you had, because you must have went to the doctor too? Absolutely. And what did they say? They told me that I could take the estrogen medication 
um, and I went through six different kinds. Nothing was working for me. I still felt like I didn't know who I was. Um, very short-wicked. I just wasn't was not myself at all. Since I've started the therapy, I feel like myself again. And you're getting implants too. Yeah, and, and implants aren't for everybody, but the, when nothing else works, the, that works the best. Absolutely. Now, the medications, the hormones they tried you on, were they mostly oral? Um, I had oral topically. Um, you had oral, you had creams, yep. you had patches. Yep. Okay. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. And did they give you testosterone as well? No. No. And a, a lot of uh, physicians are uncomfortable with giving testosterone. And if you read some of the literature, they say, oh, no, sex has nothing to do with the testosterone. But uh, I don't think you guys would agree. No. 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 Well, thank you. This was kind of a good time. Anything else, Christina? No nope. thoughts. No thoughts about your life and and how you feel about uh, the plight of women who are, because the problem is, is I, I wrote an article one time, and is, is that because there are women who felt like you guys do, and with her it's a little different because I think uh, she even think about those things. We just did it, and those things happened, right? Yeah. And one of the things uh, so far is one of the reasons Janine looks so young because estrogen keeps the skin thickness and collagen content and prevents wrinkling. But uh, with you guys, it was a, a different story. Yeah. I mean, you. so the article I wrote that I was referring to, there are women who feel like the two of you do, who never find an answer. And, that's and this is the way they feel for the rest of their life. Now, the, one of my mentors uh, was a fellow by the name of Don Gambrell from Augusta, Georgia. Uh, he's gone now, may he rest in peace. But his partner was the uh, gentleman, the physician who pioneered this therapy that uh, you guys are getting. And his name was Robert Greenblatt. And he uh, wrote a little uh, sentence. And what that sentence was, and I don't think I've ever discussed it with you, I might have with Janine over the years, is that a woman in the autumn of her life is entitled to an Indian summer rather than a winter of discontent. And I think that's well said. So thank you. And uh, thanks for agreeing to do this. And uh, I'll see if I can uh, put it together and get it up on YouTube or put it on my website. Thank you. Thank you.